Welcome to Love's Inner Alchemy. Now, here's a, a scenario, and uh, I suspect many of us can relate to this one pretty directly. You, you've fallen in love with somebody, and it's a mess. You, you disagree about everything. There may be purple passion, but you're just driving each other nuts. You know, you vote for different rascals. One of you loves Chinese food, and the other one hates Chinese food, and one's a vegetarian. The other one loves steaks, and you know, and how did that happen, you know? And, and then uh, finally, in, in, the, in the, the, the heat of all of these tensions, there's, there's an explosion and, and you break up. You know, it's, it's the end of the relationship. And, and your attitude towards your, your ex, gay, straight, purple, green, yellow, you know, whatever, we're gonna be across the board wide open to human relationships and other modalities. But, but your perspective on, on that ex-lover of yours is that that person is really crazy, you know? Unresolved issues with his mother, right? <laughs> Clear as a window pane, you know? Of course, now, now, now we talk to the ex. Ex's position is you're crazy as a bathhouse, you know? And, and, and unresolved issues with your father out the wazoo, you know? And this is the first time in the whole relationship that you find you're in perfect agreement. <laughs> Each one of you feels the other one was completely crazy. And, and so we ask the angels above, you know, which of those analyses were true? And the angels say, mm-hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Both of them. <laughs> You're both right. Both win a chance to try again with somebody else. So nothing brings our craziness to the surface faster than trying to love another human being with our bodies. Fair enough? Now there's a very specific astrological symbolism that gives us insight into exactly what's going on with that idea. It's called the family of eighth house, Pluto, Scorpio, Mars, that, that territory. And we're gonna be looking at that very specifically as, as part of this program. It's far from the whole thing, but it's part of it. Now, if, if I feel that my mother failed me, and I, I don't, I got really lucky in that department, but you know, if I feel that my mother failed me and I haven't fully dealt with that, how long is it gonna take if I am in a relationship with a woman before I am projecting that onto her? Imagining that she's going to fail me, just like my mother did. And I have no idea it's connected to my mother. That's, that's crazy, you know? That's me being crazy, no idea. So I'm totally thinking it's something she is bringing to the table and she may be completely innocent of that, but whenever I look at her, I see somebody who is plotting treachery against me or is about to let me down. It's easy to imagine a scenario where that poison that I bring to this bond sinks the ship of the relationship. I'm not seeing her anymore. I'm seeing my unresolved issues, projecting, projecting my unconscious wounds onto her. I don't see her at all. After a while, she's sick of not being seen at all. Who knows what happens, but it's probably going to be ugly, probably going to be painful. That's a sadly familiar scenario. But there's another scenario where she helps me see that. And as a result of the work that we do together in the relationship, I come to grips with this fact that my mother abandoned me and I get through it. What a beautiful moment, the culmination of the evolutionary purpose mm -hmm. of human love. And I sit there before my beloved in a spirit of naked humility. And I say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving me, even though 
I'm crazy as a shit house rat. <laughs> Pardon my French. You know? yeah. That moment of humility, you know, that's part of love too. And that's a critical link in this chain of evolution. Now, now that piece of the puzzle, we're going to relate to the sixth house and, and Virgo, and so we're going to dive into a lot of territory there. We're going to see a very schematic, uh, very uh, Capricornish model here by the time we're done. But our, our simple point here at this, this early stage of our exploration is, is that we, we all bring a certain amount of madness into the world with our incarnation. And a, another subject for another program, look at that south node of the moon and your unresolved karma from prior lives. And, and that, that's a big, big territory. But the simple point that we all bring some craziness to the table. This planet, Earth, it's not the most prestigious address in the galaxy. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse. You qualify. 